Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that mm-hmm. midweek break, talk about some of the things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin Stone. That is Jill Bryant. And over there is mm-hmm. Pedro Mateus. <laughs> and everyone at home joining us live. I was going to de zoom you, Jill, but you're just going to be big. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna be hot. wait. How long is the cord on that microphone? You can go sit on the back of the room. Like, ah. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, beautiful people? Um, tis the holidays. Uh, hopefully, you were well. If you're stuck at work, a lot of us. I'm like, well, what's the difference? And I'm like, yeah, fair point. <laughs> like, I'm still at home now. I have nothing to do. This is horrible. Go watch the Mandalorian. But um, yeah. Let's see what's up with everyone, because I I had to end a relationship, a very long term relationship. Ah. Like, um, I had to break up with Thunderbird. Oh, poor Thunderbird. <laughs> I did. I, I had to end it, man. You know, uh, we, we we've been on the rocks a little bit, Pedro. Just a little bit. You know, we were working through it, man. We're going to counseling. You know, and everything's fine. Um, what happened is Debbie pushed out. You know, a point, a little point, really, like ten point seven, and I finally was exposed to all of the glory that is, I think, Thunderbird and seventy. Oh no, 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 no. Um, first, first things first is you know this is the new one where like the default theme is white on light blue, which. I don't know how that got past QA because I can't, that, that I, I was willing to get over, but okay, real quick, something you still have to do in at towards the end of 2020 is for high DPI displays, which you still do, even though I have a UHD 43 inch monitor, um, you have to go into settings and you have to go to the advanced thing and you have to change the, uh, that one to two, like in the advanced config, mm-hmm. that one screen for scaling. Which I did. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Now all the folders are cut off. Like it looks like a hot mess for navigation on the mm-hmm. left side. It's like, um, how do I do that? Oh, it's such a known problem. Someone has written an extension for it and it's in the store. Oh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> install that then it got to where i you know i had to keep it around 1080 size on this monitor because i don't need a full screen and it was basically full screen like that and between that and it just being sluggish to start up even more so than the previous versions I had to let it go I had to let it go Aww. taking taking almost three seconds to start up to and i'm like nay so I, I just switched everything over to Evolution, and um, Evolution opens in I am like the same speed as everything else on this thread ripping system. As um, soon as you let go of the mouse, and boom, look, everything's there, and I'm done with it. Yeah, so that's it. Go. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I went around and looked in the store, man. Nobody's making extensions or themes for the new version of Thunderbird. Um, if there was like a better, I, I could have lived with it, but the visual stuff, like the dark mode. <laughs> And I didn't like that. And didn't I didn't like, like the pastel blue on white. Like visually, I couldn't, the <laughs> bandwidth, it messed up. Like, cause I need to be able to pop that open, check four or five email accounts super quick just by snapshotting it. And, and, and like the way it rolled. Um, evolution, it works. That's, it does everything I expected an email client. I got <laughs> emails that it, um, I, I don't expect much. But yeah, that, that was my biggest change. That's how boring of an existence I currently have, Pedro Mateus. Did you do anything slightly more exciting than that? <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> I actually, yeah, I got uh, a bit more time to play with the Pie Boy DMG. Yes, it's here. If you don't watch the uh, the Saturday Yay, show, Pedro. it actually arrived um, Friday. I think it was Friday. Um, so yeah, it it's here. Uh, it works. It works really well. The screen is teeny tiny. It's only um, six forty by four eighty. What did you? Well, um, that did they make one like something a little bigger, like I don't know, seventeen, eighteen inches? <laughs> Ultra wide. <laughs> Uh, the, I don't think they do. At least I haven't seen one for sale. Um, they do make <laughs> one that is basically the same size, but it's all screen. So it, it's and just as thick. I know uh, I but really yeah. want. <laughs> Get some tape. I got an idea. <laughs> but yeah, no, with a resolution this small, uh, even PSB games like demanding ones, uh, run really, really well. Um, 
I haven't tried Dolphin yet. Some people have been saying that they've been able to play um, some uh, GameCube stuff. So mm. I, need, I still need to try mm. that. Uh, N64 works, but uh, I haven't tried a GameCube. So that, that I, might be I would worth. genuinely be curious about that because <laughs> Dolphin is like crazy CPU dependent. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's right. <laughs> what about you, Joe? Anything new? Oh, boy. Well, I'm still... Speaking of um, pies, I, right? Yeah, speaking of pies, I've been really having a lot of fun with my Raspberry Pi 400. Yay! <laughs> have you have you plugged it in yet, or you just been taking it oh, around yeah. town, showing its scenes, and you're like, hey, man, <laughs> look no, at what no. I have, look at what I have, just, yeah, no, no, just, just, just partying with it, you know, I've been having a lot of fun with my pie, I've been out drinking, and... <laughs> no, so I, I've tried different distros on it, the uh, latest uh, Ubuntu Mate for Raspberry Pi, and of course, Raspbian OS, and have had fun playing games on it. I did the show notes, today's show notes on it. And I've been really impressed by it. It's the fastest pie I own. And of course, it's the fastest pie they make. <laughs> so, so that is really cool. And I am just love, love, loving it. My only complaint is the mouse is a little short. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people seem to be complaining that the cord on the yeah. mouse is teeny tiny. <laughs> but I have an extension that I use. Man, who, but... made, who made the leads on that? Nintendo? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. All right. Um that's a good little bit of catch up. No monster Dan. Other condiments were harmed uh during the <laughs> making of that intro. But we gotta talk about a thing, Pedro. And before we get started, because check this out, we know we're gonna get stuff wrong. We know oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh we have such a beautiful track record of getting stuff wrong. Um what are you talking about? At least two per episode. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> and those are just the ones we planned. Uh, yes. <laughs> next week, uh, we're going to have somebody from Red Hat uh, come chat with us and be like, you right. got that wrong, that wrong, awesome. and that wrong. So stay tuned for that. But until then, ooh, let's misrepresent ooh boy. things, Pedro. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this was literally everywhere um, Tuesday and then today what uh, was? because CentOS put out a blog post to say the future of CentOS project is CentOS stream and a lot of people went oh my what is that? comments open hmm. <laughs> they, yeah <laughs> and uh it's like oh yeah CentOS stream is uh basically a slightly different uh way of building it's uh much more geared it's much more streamlined it doesn't have like the full desktop it doesn't have everything it's basically just a base for running your containers for running your instances for running whatever it happens to be and the biggest thing that people seem to be having an issue with is that they're effectively killing off um uh, sent eight uh instead of being supported up until 2029 it's only being supported until the end of 2021 mm -hmm. and with that goes everyone that did the migration from um centos 7 recently to uh centos 8 and it is uh, going to be something like package uh, updateness wise. It's going to be uh, somewhere in between what Scent used to be, or RHL, and uh, Fedora. It's going to sort of track the uh, testing unstable part of uh, Red Hat, which people aren't terribly uh, big fans of because CentOS is, tends to be used in a more productive environment. Now, as a user, I absolutely get the... Um, having more up-to-date packages and being fitting in somewhere between old and stable like RHL and uh, new and possibly breaking stuff like Fedora, having some something in between, it, it's very nice. Uh, uh, as a user, I can see that. For businesses, eesh, that's going to be a hard sell. <laughs> yeah, so I was reading in the comments around the internet that this would lead to businesses migrating to Ubuntu and maybe OpenSUSE instead. And mm -hmm. I under I definitely understand that. Uh, they basically are, are changing the whole uh, OS <laughs> to, you know, a rolling release. So what you got to do go. is you got to take a trip back in. So you got to remember, um, <laughs> I grew up with Red Hat. You know, I was running Red Hat until Red Hat was done with me. And they're like, Red, it's not Red Hat anymore. I'm like, what mean by that, Red Hat? Like, it's Fedora now. 
the internet. Yes, there was internet back then. We all lost our collective minds. Like, oh no, it's doom. What are you talking about? And then you install Fedora Core 1, that used to be the name. And everything was right in the world, man. Uh, but there was a lot of internet. Initial blowback, things changed. That it's like, okay, look, hey, now we have Fedora. Fedora is like boringly stable these days. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> what? It just installs now? Okay. It, unless you tried to install it, like right when the um, 2060 came out, it wasn't having any of that. I had to like, yeah, it was a long story. But mm. um, I do think this is going to put some companies that didn't plan ahead into a little bit of a tight, tight spot. Because like six years ago, I think it was Red Hat and Sint, and I got together and I'm like, mm, maybe some things could possibly change down the road. Maybe we need a plan B. But um, Greg, um, one of the CentOS project founders, it looks like he was planning to do a fork or is planning to do a fork. So there is that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they, they want to like sent to sit somewhere between RHEL and Fedora, uh, kind of like a rolling release. So when I hear rolling release, mm, I would not have a rolling release in the studio. Like, no, 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 no. Um, I use uh, Debian Stale for that reason. I'm like, okay, you come out every two years and you're supported for five years. No moving targets. I like that. I even tried um, when I was fighting with Black Magic. I'm like, you need to. I set sent up on this box partially just because I wanted to see if I could still tango with a beast. I'm like, oh pff, man, people need to be quiet. This is easy. Um. But I could see if you hadn't set up any planning, you know, you a lot of times you end up using an enterprise stuff. You'll end up using Scent or RHEL because that's where the drivers be. You know, I run into that with like Melanox equipment, run into that black magic stuff. Um, mm-hmm. That's just where your official support is, because if you call up support and they're like, oh, you're not running Scent. Hi, black magic talking directly to you right now. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. We understand you paid much. Bye. Um, <laughs> I I don't know, man. I mean, you might see some people moving over to the Ubuntu's or the Debian's or I don't know. I don't know. We'll know more next week because we'll be able to talk and uh, it's it better. I love the hate site. They made a hate site. Oh, the oh, hate site? Hang yeah. on. <laughs> Where is the... Uh, CentOS.rip. Yeah, CentOS.rip. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually uh, genuinely well done, and you can tell that the person who made it was deeply invested in the <laughs> CentOS yeah, purchase thing. Rail, um, purchase Rail twice. Yeah. <laughs> the the <laughs> Rail project. <laughs> uh, you know what? You know what? This is well done enough to where like, okay, that's kind of funny. I mean, yeah. you, you got to be able to take something like that and be like, all right, all right, not bad. Yeah. And uh, if, if I do suggest that if you are listening to the show or you're watching us on YouTube, go and check out the show notes and read the comments on that <laughs> article, please. Um, <laughs> good times. So something we've been talking about is every time system 76 has a new release you know new hardware uh, a new finely wood grain piece of um <laughs> mechanical wonder stuff with like hard drill anyway <laughs> where's the amd option on the laptops i know pedro both of us were like where's that uh, yeah. well <laughs> that's right Here man right in red amd's running bulldozer cp wait no but for Bull. some reason they decided <laughs> to put a gif of a bull, which made me think, what? That's probably not something you really want. <laughs> Some people to think about as somebody who in bulldozer CPU and ran these shows for a long time. That's not something it currently heats an apartment in Canada right now. Not making that up. That's exactly what that CPU is doing. But Pangolin, <laughs> staging. Uh, they got a new system tech specs and uh, these are going to be rolling out. So what are we talking about this? Uh, Again, bulldozers think get over that. We're going to be able to get a AMD 4700 or 4500U up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. And it's going to weigh in at 1.65 kilos, or that's 3.64 freedom units, starting at 849. And I'm guessing I'm going to be too far off, probably about $1,000 for one you'd actually want to use. 
Probably. Oh. <laughs> Otherwise, that 840, uh, 849 is just going to be for the 8 gigabyte with the uh, Ryzen 5 4500U mm-hmm. with the smallest possible SSD. <laughs> oh, man. Jill, do you want one? Yeah. Are you going to buy one? Come on there. I, actually, I, I think it's going to be a beautiful laptop, and I would like one if it had an Ultra HD screen or at least a 1440p option because that's a, a higher quality stream for doing art and uh playing games so 15.6 inch <laughs> 1080p hmm. it is one of the yeah. um middle size laptops i suppose i should say because there are 17 inch and 21 inch laptops now so uh yeah, yeah. but i guess starting at 850 is system 76 is equivalent of a reasonably priced option i would uh, yeah. like to see you know something a bit lower because not everyone can afford that right now <laughs> get a chromebook <laughs> <laughs> they don't make them in ryzen yet yeah no yet. <laughs> yeah yeah. The, yeah we also the rumors on the internet and like oh um amd is working on their own mac style uh i don't think anyone's. arm thingy yeah it's like let's yes. revive uh, the k12 that'll be interesting they uh, do make a module uh the v2000 mm-hmm that, that that one's uh, it's looking pretty nice. It could be interesting. <laughs> could be interesting. But hey, man, it's AMD seventy six. Yeah. I'm happy to see that. I think eight forty nine is reasonable. Uh, System seventy six yeah. is not the mm-hmm. business of making like the bottom bargain basement stuff that barely. No. Yeah, you get one of yeah. these. You get the good support that goes with it. You know, if you have any problems with it, it should be taken care of. I think that's reasonable. I mean, it's hey, you know, it could be System seventy six six. Still cheaper than a Mac. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> On all sides. Yeah. <laughs> Easily. Um, so that's some good news from a Linux vendor, but we do have some yes. bad news from uh, this comes from Omg oh. Ubuntu. Uh, all this is going to be in our show notes. Go check it out. Za Reason Linux PC seller is being forced to close, which is sad because, man, you got to check this out. These lot. They, they've they been around since like 2008. Mm-hmm. I'm sad to see them go, man. Uh, these things do happen. But they basically rolled on like, hey, pandemic was the last little blow. We were kind of teetering along. And this just took us out. Look at the little bizarre reason. Oh, oh um, beautiful cases. You can think about this. The big downside with this is something that they had to say, which good on them for saying it, like flat out, like all of your warranties are null and void, unfortunately. Yeah. So that that is like the big big downside. On the upside, collector item. <laughs> Very <Yes>. true. <laughs> I if have you a, have a older, reason, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have an older dual core laptop of theirs that's still still running beautifully. Mm. And you know, this is a family owned business, which is. And you know, they and they were one of the very first com- vendors to sell computers of Linux pre installed. So this this was very depressing to me. Because not only do I know the family, and for many years they had a booth at the Southern California Linux Expo, and uh, they actually helped start Scale. And uh, the, you know their their children um, were friends and members of the Linux Chicks LA, and 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 the parents were friends of ours, and they used to donate hardware and Tex plushies, like that big one right there is from Zaw Reason. Um, uh, they gave those to us as gifts and for our fundraising raffles at our booth. So I, I owe so much to them and all the Linux chicks, we all have their computers. So <laughs> I was just very down about this and yeah, I almost yeah. cried actually because these are friends. <laughs> so <laughs> And they used to be the mm-hmm. budget option for US peeps because yes, exactly. otherwise you have System 76 and um Entroware and Tuxedo. I think Entroware ships to the US. I don't know if Tuxedo does, maybe. Uh but yeah. Right now, uh there really isn't a lower price option yeah, for budget. uh yeah. linux pre-installed pcs uh in the us that that yeah that's sad mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. yeah <laughs> well good news everyone uh you probably don't want to go out and buy a um new amd card Aww. if you're running davinci i've been waiting for this to show up um quick mention because here's the thing pedro i've been 
I, I had, because of you, I had to legitimately look at the new AMD GPUs. It's all Pedro's fault. Okay. 100%. <laughs> because I'm going to buy the 3060 uh-huh. Ti He's when, going to buy the 3060 when it's Ti. available. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Which I was like, there we go. This is the perfect card for this system because it's <laughs> all I need. And Pedro's like, I'm buying that one. So now I have to entertain the idea of getting a 3070. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, I was planning on the 3070 as well. <laughs> once I'm in that price bracket, might as well explore the AMD options. Um, mm-hmm. And hey, 16 gigs of memory on the new AMD cards. I'm like, okay, nice. let's go see what they can do. And uh, Puget Systems, they t- typically do this. And this is a reasonably safe bet from their past benchmarks, you know, because it doesn't matter what they do on PC. Mac, Linux scores roughly the same because they're all compute heavy. And hoof, oh, we, we got to go down. So mm-hmm. at, at, yeah, on, this is pretty much how it rolls all the way down. Up at the, real simply, you know, this is extended overall score, thirty ninety, crushing everything, <laughs> including the Titan. Man, uh, twenty eighty Ti is still doing good. Sixty eight hundred XT, uh, way down, about halfway. Then, which you know, sixty eight hundred XT is faster than a twenty seventy Super. But the RX 6800 16 gig is uh, slower than a 2060 Super. Mm-hmm. That's not good. Um, and <laughs> the, this trend just continues, man. You know, mm. 57 at the bottom. Vega 64 is faster than, which I guess kind of maybe should be considering the price. And um, yeah, it's just no, it dominated. <laughs> dominated because by Because the new architecture. <laughs> This it, here's the thing. I know you was in my garage. It made me sad because that it's like I can't even consider that. And no, I mean it'd be neat. I would rather use OpenCL if it was a option. And yes, a working option has to be comparable to the alternative. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't cut your nose off to spite your face. I know some people are very, very keen on doing that just so they can take some moral high ground, but mm. Yeah. yeah, sticking to one's principles has, uh, well, there's something to be said about that, but the, the Vega 64 on a couple of the tests is faster than the 6800 XT. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> no, that that's bad. <laughs> Whatever you did, go back, fix it, because that's bad. <laughs> I, I would like to think um, in a very reasonable way. AMD, when they released uh, these new cards, and they just released a new one, the 6900. The 6900. The 6900 and it has really, supposed to be really the good. big one. These are focused yeah. for gaming performance, uh-huh. not exactly. workstation yeah. performance. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll have a whole new round of overpriced WX series. So Probably, yeah. <laughs> That'd be interesting to see. Uh, Pedro, you do love your dot files, your dot folders. You, you are the, <laughs> you're the dot man. You're full of dots. I, it's like connect the dots. That's what I think about. <laughs> actually don't mind uh, dot files and dot folders because i usually keep those hidden uh the thing that i mind are stupid all lowercase folders like snap <laughs> that's what annoys me that's what annoys me a lot but i get that a lot of people do keep those dot files visible and they like to have everything neat in much the same way that i do but they don't want to just random games or random applications just creating an entirely new uh, dot folder in their home directory. Well, Antidot is here very much uh, to try and fix that. It tries to uh, move everything to the appropriate locations and then we'll create sim links, we'll create uh, like environment variables to try and work around the fact that it just completely migrated a directory out of where the application or game happens to be looking for it, which is good. Uh, no, yeah, my old That's very good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they actually have uh, the example there of um, Docker. So that you can actually, if you don't like having all of those dot folders uh, visible, well, you can do Control H. Hmm. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, I was actually really happy that the antidote clean command will actually prompt prompt you if you want to apply the rule, like a like a good Linux app does. But I was happy it did that because it actually made me a little nervous running it. So, so, so I actually ran it on a one of my other machines, and it, and it 
did a really good job. <laughs> it, it moved the dot file. They don't actually, you know, for me, they don't really bother me, but it is nice mm -hmm. that they, they move it to a more organized, in a more organized way. <laughs> so. Well, I like the idea, man. I mean, more appropriate locations, you know, based on yeah. the XDG uh, directory <laughs> specs, but um, it's, if, just close your eyes. You don't see. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep your eyes open just you know do control h it'll hide the dot files <laughs> it, I, I like to be able to i like to know who they're there but i also like them to be in logical locations too because we, we, mm -hmm. we've all been on that journey that search of like mm -hmm. really where's that this thing true. at where did you say where's your config mm -hmm. file um yeah it's usually a dot config the root of the home folder or, local or share, dot local but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm like really okay fine you're there summon etsy <laughs> yeah. that, uh, what do we have? Oh, and fish in um, ZHS support in the works. Mm -hmm. Also, missed opportunity. I'm sure the program would run possibly seven to ten percent faster if you just renamed it to anti doot. <laughs> anti doot or boop doot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anti doot. Uh, that might definitely. Uh, don't ask. Me. It's magic how that'll work, but they'll probably uh, speed it up a little bit. Joe, you were excited about uh, G Music. Yeah, browsers. G Music browser is back from the dead after five years. It's actually one of my favorite uh, music player programs, and I'm so happy to see it back. And it even has two ports and updated uh, GTK2 client. And they also have a beta GTK3 client. And what, what's unique about this player is it has so much detail for the artist info, lyrics, and album covers. And it's just that nicely does look presented. Like something from eight years ago. Oh, God. It, is, it does. It is classic. kind of <laughs> classic looking, yes. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but it's very customizable, has a really customizable interface that you can completely customize, or it has some predefined layouts like iTunes mode. And uh, yeah, I was just, I was happy to hear that this was back because that was my go to for a long time to play all my MP3 and OG files. Hmm. And now it supports .opus file format, so that is cool. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks like someone tried to mm -hmm. uh, recreate Amarok in GTK, and that was the <laughs> final result. <laughs> so it's like being able to run Amarok without like two gigs of depths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you'll have to download the GTK framework anyway. So, <laughs> well, if you didn't have QT, I mean, what, are you TK. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're already running KDE or LXQT or something like that, you already have those depths. However, <laughs> you know, this is why I love app images, and also, there, yes. there, this is yes. a very okay. There you go. There, there's your snap argument. There's your flat pack argument. <laughs> KDE and live. I use KDN Live, but I don't want the kitchen sink attached to it. Mm, okay, all right. Boop. Done. Yeah. I like that. But I don't have a lot of local music. And by a lot, I mean the mm. um, Zathnas and Frankennas, both powered down. And that was the only boxes in this house that had any type of like MP3s. And I know some people still like to carry them around with them because I will have those conversations. I'm like, why did you get 128 gig mobile? It's like, for the music. <laughs> if your cellular connection goes down, you're going to have, with, I, I think you're going to have problems that your music uh, <laughs> collection is not going to be able to solve, man. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, I, I get, you know, keeping the, a local copy of your music library uh, because I like to buy game soundtracks mm -hmm. and, yes. and then I download them and I put them on the NAS so that I can listen to them while I'm around the house. Yeah. <laughs> and I was a DJ for 16 years, so I have uh, literally probably several terabytes of data just in music files because I would back up all my rare discs, whether they be CD or vinyl, on, onto the hard drive. <laughs> yeah, I'm living in 2020. All that's in the cloud. Uh, <laughs> 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 this is kind of interesting. Um, what, yeah. Shut Century? Yeah, yep. interesting name. It kind of reminds me of a portal turret, right? <laughs> Shut Sentry. <laughs> it's <laughs> shutting down. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly, Pedro. <laughs> so Shut Sentry is a virtual dead man switch that it protects your computer from unauthorized physical access, like if you were to put in a USB drive, and it it runs 
and uh, shows you an on-screen prompt with at regular time intervals. And if the correct password is not entered, the system is locked or something or with the phrase shut down. failure options i enjoy <laughs> like your yeah. options for failure <laughs> and, and we both know you'll never amount to anything so here's <laughs> yeah. some options <laughs> that's the gooey <laughs> yes that's the gooey windows version the linux version is an easy to run shell script and is an easy to use cli uh, program there it is <laughs> you know what you get bo you get a bonus soda for having a that's more than so many gitlab and github GUI project. Yeah. Say, hey, man, you took a picture mm -hmm. of the terminal. Good on you. I have some idea. Yeah, it's really nicely laid out. <laughs> of what I'm walking into. Uh, Pedro, you, you seem to have an issue with it, though. I, I do, because I was reading through it and uh, like the uh, the screenshot that they have of the Windows version. And it's like, okay, so you can run this every fixed amount of time, or uh, you can do it when someone attaches... Um, a USB device, or you can do it when you one of your Bluetooth devices gets disconnected. Basically, if you've ever, you know, attached a Bluetooth game controller or you've been playing a game and something just goes out of the system, even your like your wireless mouse. Yeah, don't put this in your gaming machine because you will be challenged and you will have to fumble to put things down and Correct. grab things Correct. and shut down. You nailed it. Don't install this on your gaming machine, Nay. Yeah. Don't do that. That's a stupid idea. Install it on a soon-to-be former friend's gaming machine. There you yeah, go, man. Like Good idea. <laughs> Sit back, relax, and um, yeah, just watch that take place. Uh, yeah, no, I, I can imagine anyone who's not expecting this and every, say, 30 minutes, they get a little prompt to like, type in the password or we're going to shut you down. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that, that probably has use for someone. I just wanted to give it a mention. I like yeah. giving, I, I run across these smaller projects. I'm like, hey, man, that's neat. Like this one, Artline. Yes. Artline, it looks fairly interesting because it is just a PyTorch uh, project that you deep can... Deep learning. Yep. It is uh, deep learning and you point it at a picture and it does the the usual, it tries to grab like all the detail and makes it as though it were hand-drawn, which is... Yeah, the, there's Rami Malek uh, playing... Um, Mr. Robot. Freddy yeah, Mercury. that's all that episode. Yeah. <laughs> and uh it's yeah it, it is exactly just pointed at a picture and it does like someone had drawn the picture rather than it being just a photograph and it looks very good it actually does a very good job and so I, it's like okay do i have to actually set up a development environment to <laughs> get this going but no they had a uh, they have a google collab there'll be a link in the show notes so i went there and i uh, just pointed it at one of my pictures on that I have on Imgur. And, okay, go ahead. It failed. Hmm. So, yeah. that was disappointing. <laughs> it failed for me. Yeah. It failed for me, too. I was but on it's our Linux fast site. AI and PyTorch. <laughs> PyTorch, have you got to play with PyTorch? It's so much better. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> blink, blink noises. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's some issues with like backgrounds and lighting and stuff like that. Um, some of the models confuse, uh, be like with hair and shadow, but it's being worked yeah. on. I thought this, yeah, oh, you need a high progress. resolution images naturally, but eh, go play with it. I, I wanted to do some AB comparisons because it's interesting to see something like this actually look at the image. And try to make a good one, because you know, you're like, but sketch filters, yeah, sometimes you can get... They're bad, yeah. <laughs> most of them. I don't know. Maybe I can come up with like some horror soup by making some sketch art with us. <laughs> Maybe? Uh, you mean the logos? <laughs> no, no. I, I, I want to make your face into wallpaper. Oh, okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> but I also would like to upload it to this uh, computer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, my um, my ego is absolutely okay with people having me as their wallpaper. I didn't say what I was doing <laughs> wallpaper, but okay. <laughs> um, last one of the year, this is going to be the last one that we cover, is uh, mm -hmm. open source predictions for 2021. And uh, Jill? 
Uh, yeah. Is there anything so. <laughs> in here that's predictable? Yeah, actually, I think uh, Jack uh, Jack Wallen, who uh, wrote the post, uh, I think he's right as usual. Um, he does these almost every year, and uh, he he was saying that uh, we will see the continued adoption of open source in the business se sector, yay, as well as an increase of Linux on the desktop, and maybe on the desktop only about ten percent. But that's still huge coming from uh, 2 point two percent <laughs> where it has been. And um, yeah, so the open source being adopted in business, um, he sees a lot of that is being sparked also by the pandemic. And yes. I see that. Yeah, <laughs> very, very, very <laughs> true, because people businesses are looking for uh, cheap and especially free options, a la open source. And he talked about also uh, Kubernetes uh, being simplified, like it's going to, it'll be easier uh, point and click on a web page to implement Kubernetes with uh, and uh, Docker images. And what the one I thought was really interesting, and I think he's actually right on, is SUSE, um, he predicts them being at the head of, head of uh, big data um, in the coming year. Because deployment and simpl simplicity with their SUSE manager tool makes things really makes um, the AI environments really really easy to manage. Yeah, that yeah. I walk in and go, mm -hmm. no one's touching SUSE right now, simply because who's going to buy them next? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. Yeah, there there is that, but they are 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 growing huge. And uh, businesses yeah. operate on certainty. <laughs> Susie is not yeah. a certain company, unfortunately. Looking at that, man, uh, I, I got to say, this is definitely our year of the Linux desktop article for 2020. Um, to the point, though, business <laughs> options uh, over this year, we've had some good news, you know, from Lenovo, HP, and Dell just rolling out their Linux options and solutions. And that's kind of brilliant. We're happy to see that. And doesn't mean you can get one. I mean, but it just means it's an option to ask your employer, ask Jordan, hey, can I get a let no? Okay. <laughs> you could have a Mac. Yeah. Right. Go. You end up getting a Mac, <laughs> man. Uh, but so if we're, if we're going to do the uh, like end of the year, like, mm -hmm. hey, man, um, you're the Linux desktop. Can, can we also do the um, the desktop is dead thing, too? I want to do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, his desktop. final point. <laughs> yeah. His final point <laughs> is literally is like Linux on the home desktop will start to gain serious traction. Really? You had to end the article with, oh, 2021 <laughs> is the year of the Linux desktop. Uh -huh. Really? Well, really? It's, it's because of, you know, AI and cloud <laughs> services. And a lot of the companies like Lenovo and, and you know, System76 and, and, uh, um, Dell are coming out with laptops with Linux on them, Linux desktop. So that, that's definitely a thing. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> well, Canonical said it's grow. It has grown huge in the. Well, in if the I was desktop. in the business of selling yeah. stuff, I would say it's grown too. Um, yeah, it's like, oh, we're but, doing so well. Please buy more from us. Here's the thing: at the yeah. end of the day, everybody's <laughs> in it, but the desktop usage. I, something I absolutely track is. Uh, so many people live in absolute bubbles. You you need to get outside of like your friend's sphere and go over to your friend's house that's not into IT, it's not a nerd, anything like that. They don't have a desktop computer in their house. Like what? Oh, I, I got an HP from like 10 years ago. What are you, what are you talking about? What are you, what are you kidding, man? I, I, I got my mobile right here. That's what I use. Um, now, I'm going to say, if you're going to be seeing Linux adoption in businesses and any widespread COVID kind of threw a monkey wrench in that because uh, I'm <laughs> seeing a lot of people coming back into offices despite what uh, corporate real estate would like to happen. I don't think that's ever going to be a thing again because we've kind of demonstrated like on a shoestring budget, like 20 seconds to pull it off. I'm like, oh, we could do this. Mm -hmm. um, that got accelerated. <laughs> but um, you might see Linux in the form of uh, thin clients. Um, because I, I can definitely see a future where you're streaming your Microsoft operating system from your Linux thin client because Microsoft's like, hey, here's your desktop. We can stream that because if we can stream video games, you know what's a lot easier than streaming video games? Your desktop. <laughs> streaming a static image that's just a desktop wallpaper <laughs> with some icons on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can run that off of a Raspberry Pi. So. I don't know, man. <laughs> 
There's a uh, streaming. I do honestly believe there's going like that just makes too much logical sense as uh, streaming mm-hmm. desktops in the future. Cause you're already seeing that in industries like um, animation, 3d modeling, stuff like that. People stuck at home. That's how they're accessing the programs. People I've talked to working and like, yeah, all right. They've got their own setup and I'm like, all right, that's cool. I can see that rolling out to the desktop, uh, but, and you know, Microsoft, man, you know, Microsoft wants to say subscription. I'm like, come on. Oh, yeah. Come on, uh, you, you want to buy a little Microsoft? I'm waiting for Windows 10 S to see what kind of a, a special Microsoftness mm. they pull with that one. Just nine ninety nine <laughs> a month, and you can have all the Windows you can. Eat. Uh. <laughs> Delicious Windows, Pedro. Think about it. Yeah, it'd be like a Netflix subscription. Mm, yeah, as long as you pay it. I can it. imagine the kind of uh, hell that would introduce uh, to create entirely new support teams or train the current support teams. Uh, that support regular desktop Windows to support uh, Windows 10s. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good times for Linux, no matter what. No matter what anybody says. Yes. So that's good. <laughs> exactly. That's kind of brilliant. Um, we're going to get into a slice of pie, but a little bit of shameless self-promotion if you want to help out the show and get some cool swag i just use the word swag unironically deal with it <laughs> yes um stored at linuxemcast.com we got some shirts uh just mm-hmm. in time i think if you order them like right like right now you'll get them in time for the holidays yep. uh yeah just barely long sleeve cups stickers we yeah. got a mask uh mask <laughs> die cuts all the fun stuff uh, and we get a little cut of that and uh helps out the show all that fun stuff yeah. we also have a patron hey, LWW shirt. all of our beautiful patrons <laughs> they make this show possible patron.com forward slash linux cast to see us a lot better than yes. this show is brought to you by bubba keg <laughs> it's oh, the good. most bubby e keggy it's a 52 which leads me to believe that there's a superior model <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I'm happy to see that Exalty is getting his LWW shirt December yeah. 22nd. Oh, Yay. very nice, very nice. Yay. Yay. <laughs> That's awesome. Man. Confuse friends and family this holiday season. Yeah. With Linux What's that? Gamecast <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get into it. Happy Pi Day. That's right. Um, boop. There it is. See you next time. That seems like pie. a waste of a very good mold for not a whole lot of pie. <laughs> but, uh, you know. To that point, you have the Nano Pi. It's not a Raspberry Pi. It is very much using the mm-hmm. Rock Chip uh, RK thirty nine uh, thirty three ninety nine, which is the same one that Pine uses for everything. Uh, and it is not, uh, as they say in the article, it's not the most um, efficient when it comes to like power usage and heat, because it does get a little bit toasty. A little bit. And they have mm-hmm. yeah, they have a little uh, a little graph there and. To uh, the NanoPi R4S's credit, the optional little aluminium case that it comes with does a very good job of sinking that heat away from the uh, components that do get the hottest. And you have multiple uh, configurations, obviously. You start at one gig of RAM and you can go all the way up to four. Where have I seen that before? Oh, that's right. I have a Pinebook Pro. It's right over there. <laughs> you wouldn't know it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, w- I went to look to see if I could reach it, but no, I can't. No. Uh, it's they- for the best, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> At least I can see where it is this time instead of having to rummage through the drawers for like two minutes. Uh, the, <laughs> the big, big selling point here is the fact that it may not have um, Wi-Fi, but it does have two gigabit uh, Ethernet ports and two USB uh, 3.0 ports, which is very nice because you can actually install uh, OpenWRT on it. And look, now it's an access point or it's a teeny tiny little router. Nice. Yeah. I guess. What's it going to cost me, Pedro? How many thousands of dollars? The, uh, the base version starts at $45. Okay. Uh, if you want Great. the... Wait, wait. Four gigabyte version, it's uh, $55. Does it come with a spoiler? Uh, no. Useless. If you want the, the spoiler <laughs> case, <laughs> uh, it's an extra $14, which means if you bought the four gigabyte version with the metal case, <laughs> it would be $69. <laughs> 
<laughs> there, I'm done with that joke. Okay. Yes. Uh, all I heard was no spoiler. Um, that's a thing. If you want to go play with it, um, rug chip, but, um, we got some interesting, I almost said good news and my brain just like came out and dropped an elbow on me. I'm like, oh. <laughs> new version of raspberry Pi OS Yay. released. Uh, there is some good stuff in here. There most definitely is first and foremost, welcome to the brave new world. A Pulse Audio, kids. Yeah, have fun with that. Uh, they believe uh, Pulse Audio has reached a point. Just just when we're getting ready to get rid of Pulse Audio and replace it with Pipewire. <laughs> yes. It's stable now. They're like, hey, yes. man. It, it, and this is their exact wording. It's reached a point where it solves more problems than it creates. That is the most glowing thing they could come up with. My, yeah, that was this funny. is how they're defending their point of like, this is why we're not using just straight up Pulse anymore. Because this is... Okay. Yeah, you get that. You get it. Um, kind of interesting mm-hmm. to see, but they've also added a Chromium with uh, hardware acceleration. So WebRTC. Yay, Ski, finally. Yeah, <laughs> Jitsi, all that fun stuff. Yay. That I'm really happy to see. And and uh, no more Flash support. Oh, no, it's both of you. Um, there's a little talking about Pulse Audio, and then they go through a lot of defense. For like, this is why we did it. I get it. Uh, should, theoretically, <laughs> they've done some plumbing. This is why we do it. <laughs> for um blue teeth and all the other fun stuff shouldn't work a little better and they've got like a little device profile thing they've added and they've thought it through this wasn't just um lazily done by new means whatsoever printing though check this out cups and system config printer now installed as part of the raspberry pi os mm-hmm. for both of you with printers plugged in to your raspberry pi <laughs> um oh brother uh, brother, <laughs> oh, <laughs> You'll never. I guess you them. could use a Pi as a print server, so yeah, it would make sense to be able to talk to them over the network. You know what, Pedro? I, I I'm going to say I'm against it because I'm not having a print server that I could lose. I mean, physically, <laughs> you could lose it uh, from your desk to you know screwing it on whatever wall it happens to be. I, I'm thinking in a business <laughs> environment. I'm thinking like Vin would think. When he's in that business environment, like I bet I could hide that uh. <laughs> in the lip of the cab. Like, oh man, um, <laughs> what do you think, Jill? Yeah. So one of the cool things is that uh, for my Raspberry Pi 400, they're actually gonna um, have an option now for the uh, power LED to also do um, um, hard drive uh, on and off. So that'll be cool too. And, but what I was really impressed with with this release is there are really wonderful new updates for us that are visually challenged. And so now uh, to use Orca, you just hold down Control Alt and Spacebar to automatically install Orca. And then a dialogue prompt will appear and uh, Orca will actually tell you that it's. Um, installed and when it has it finished so it, it may, they're making great strides that's um, very for, good yeah that's to just wonderful. have that out of the box and out of the box someone yeah, yeah someone <laughs> who's visually impaired just pulls it out of the box goes control on space and it starts reading it out loud we're installing uh, text-to-speech support we're installing yeah. the screen reader that's also the thing very i would good. like to see <laughs> printed on a piece of paper on top of it <laughs> oh, <laughs> sort of defeat the purpose. Yeah. <laughs> well, in big, big fonts, Pedro, so you didn't have to use something else to find out about the feature. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, maybe you want to tell us about your features. Maybe you have a pie, new hot pinus, and uh, you want to uh, do some cool stuff with it, or you've done some cool stuff with it, or just thoughts, hints, allegations. You got some questions to ask, some things to tell us. How can they do that one, Pedro Mateus? Mm, <laughs> there are many ways you can do that. The safest way is probably to send a text message. You can to, be like that dude no. on YouTube. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not uh, start giving out phone numbers at this point. Uh, but yes, if you would like to write us a text message, you can do so by going to linuxgamecast.com and hitting the contact button. LWDW is a show that you need to pick if you'd like to send some feedback. Otherwise, we may be inclined to misinterpret that as some hate mail. And then uh, you may have some naughty words. Uh, leverage that you on that Saturday show what we do. No such thing will happen here, although you may get a little bit of sarcasm. Yeah, but... Yes, it will, Pedro, because you, you've already caused me one edit. 
<laughs> what did I say? Oh, you dropped the H bomb. Heck, really? <laughs> yeah, it's like the first thing they say when you're like, "Does this contain naughty words like that one?" <laughs> yeah, but that's like the lowest on the uh, scale yeah, of YouTube. Yeah, still causes me extra steps. <laughs> but that's why okay. we love you um <laughs> so yeah man we were talking about the uh humble download mm -hmm. kerfuffle Yay. and uh mm -hmm. Baron Tanuna is like yo yo uh, hey, <laughs> hey do you not remember I'm sure I've told you about this before but what are you what are you doing acting like a Windows user and downloading zips via browser from humble four question mark HB downloader will download all of your bundles save steam keys obviously with checksum and hashing and make sure nothing is corrupt. There's some links to it. I'll be in the show notes. Between that and El Logan Elgog down Downloader. Okay, Elgog <laughs> Downloader. Uh, link to that. It's made my life so much easier. Um, I can just run a cron job dun, dun, and downloads. I forget what I've bought. Uh, we've all done it. Don't be shy. Uh -huh. I don't know, man. I'm a pretty shy person. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I'll raise my hand and I, I will admit I completely forgot that HB downloader was even an option. We talked about it uh, and I just <laughs> yeah, I haven't used it in a long time either, Pedro, so I kind of forgot about it myself. And I, I didn't know about the GOG one, so thank you, Vera Tenuta. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, honestly, yeah. I mean, on I don't download enough multi-part stuff. That is what it boiled down to. That was the first time I'd ran into uh -huh. a situation where I was like, you need to download 28 of something. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, no, I have a uh, Firefox set up that if I hit that download all button, uh, mm -hmm. and I switch to the torrents, it downloads them all automatically. And then Qubit torrent picks up on all of them automatically and <laughs> done. The, nice. um, and it was that cause, uh, I mirror made a mention yesterday in discord that he was getting some, uh, because if you don't know, if you're on Linux, um, you may very well encounter the fact that, 97% of the files are RAR files with a zip extension, which can cause issues, obviously. And Humble's like, hello, well, that's how they're going to stay. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, according to Mir, he posted uh, on Discord earlier today or yesterday. I think it was yesterday, yeah. Yeah, that Humble got back to him. It's like, uh, no, sorry, we're not changing it. They're, yeah. they're staying as they are. Okay. Thanks, Humble. Big <laughs> job on that one. <laughs> Um, <laughs> why are we giving you money? <laughs> you know, because technically, if you jump through enough hoops, Pedro Matiz, you can extract them. Yeah. Didn't you? Didn't you see the simple wall of text that was handily provided for Clearly us not. on Saturday show? And I'm like, yeah, it's easy as follow all that, deal with it. <laughs> all right, beautiful people, uh, we gotta get out of here. It's been fun, but we'll see you next week. But until then, we're gonna roll some credits, and uh, yeah, Yay. let's get some music going on. Aw, thank you to Pink Ham Racing for hosting us on Twitch. That was sweet. Pink Ham Racing, that sounds delightfully yeah. naughty, po possibly delicious. Uh, it, it is delicious. And ham, for the follow. you want it pink. Is ham pink? <laughs> yes. Okay. What about cooked ham? Haplo Justin. Uh, it depends Michael, on how far Barbrand, you cook it. Scott and Foxdog are there in the Atomic Ass and Mike G. Do you like, uh, like medium rare ham? Dark wing and empty. I, 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 I like raw ham. <laughs> Seriously, just give me a ham huh? cut and I will eat it. <laughs> I may have Ooh. parasites afterwards, but I will eat it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've never <laughs> tried that, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that scares so me good. a little bit. <laughs> no, no, no. The, uh, I, I just like checked off a bunch of boxes like, may I have parasites? No, okay. Oh, oh that, that clears that <laughs> Hmm. You have the brain worms, Peter Matthias. <laughs> Probably. Maybe. Aww. Bye, beautiful people. We'll Bye, everyone. <laughs>